seven actors who ruined their careers in 2022 so far. Amber Heard. Lies and manipulation ruined this lass's career. Born in Texas, Amber Heard spent much of her childhood riding horses and participating in beauty pageants. The year 2003 marked her show business entry, via music videos no less. Her movie debut was in Friday Night Lights 2004, with her first leading role coming in All the Boys Love Mandy Lane 2006 a slasher movie that got mixed reception from critics and did moderately well at the box office. Amber Heard first got popular in 2008 upon the release of Pineapple Express and Never Back Down. She also made a critically lauded appearance in The Joneses 2009, upstaging the great Demi Moore, and in 2011, she starred opposite the man who would later become her husband in The Rum Diary. Magic Mike XXL 2015, One More Time 2015, and Aquaman 2017 were the kind of movies in which she put her talents on the table and blew critics away. With Aquaman, for example, grossing over $1 billion at the box office. So, shortly after Amber met Johnny Depp on the set of The Rum Diary, the two hit it off, began dating, and eventually got married in February 2015. Amber Heard filed for divorce in May 2016, shockingly accusing Johnny Depp of physical and verbal abuse. Dear Johnny later stated that his telling her that he was leaving her on April 21, 2016 had resulted in her or her friends evacuating their bowels on the bed they both shared. Anyway, in February 2016, Johnny Depp sued his ex-wife over a Washington Post op-ed in which she had made statements he considered deeply defamatory and stated that rather than being the victim of an abusive marriage, Amber Heard had been the abuser. In August 2020, Amber Heard switched to her war mode and filed a suit, alleging harassment and defamation on the part of Johnny, his lawyers, and representatives. The case went to court and the proceedings ran from April to June 2022, being live-streamed to millions of eager viewers and so popular that social media posts related to the trial consistently gained more engagement than anything else that had happened so far in the year, including the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The jury eventually ruled that Amber Heard's op-ed had contained false claims and had been defamatory, awarding Johnny Depp $10 million in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive damages, with the punitive damage later being reduced to $350,000. Amber, in turn, was awarded $2 million over a false and defamatory statement made by a fella who, at the time, was performing lawyerly duties for her ex-husband. The trial was, of course, a very public spectacle and resulted in public opinion very firmly swinging against Amber Heard. She was seen as a lying and manipulative narcissist and is currently in the hole to her ex-husband for millions of dollars that he does not appear to be in a hurry to collect, especially since she cannot pay. The fallout of the trial included an online petition backed by millions of votes that successfully barred her from featuring in an Aquaman sequel and future movie roles, with some of her old movies being boycotted by both diehard Johnny Depp fans and folks who saw her as having maliciously ruined the career of a good man. Be sure to stick to the end to see just why Cuba Gooding Jr. is a bit of a leper in Hollywood at the moment. If you thought that Amber story was bananas, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more amazing actor videos. Matthew Morrison. Here's an actor who blames cancel culture for his dwindling career, just like his colleague actor coming up. Matthew Morrison is an actor, singer, songwriter, and dancer who popped into this planet in October 1978. Born and raised in California, he was bitten by the acting bug when he was a little more than knee-high, regularly performing in school plays and holding a youth theater membership card. In 1999, he showed up on The Late Show with David Letterman, along other fictional members of a boy band, with this appearance fortuitously making it possible for him to get a role in Footloose. 
In 2005, Matthew got a Tony Award nomination for The Light in the Piazza, a musical, and from then on he began regularly appearing in varied TV shows and movies. His biggest break came in 2009 when he was cast in Glee, and he scored his directorial debut in the ninth episode of the third season of the show. Early in 2010, Matthew signed a recording contract with Mercury Records with his eponymous studio album Seeing the Light of Day the following year. It had duets with Elton John and Gwyneth Paltrow and received a mixed reception from critics, with a second studio album coming in 2013. In April 2022, Matthew Morrison was chosen as a judge for the 17th edition of So You Think You Can Dance, alongside Jojo Siwa and Stephen Boss. However, he was kicked out the next month for sending inappropriate messages to a contestant on the show. Matthew feels he is a cancel culture victim, blames toxic gossip for his current predicament, and says he was just being friendly. According to him, via an Instagram post, the message he had sent was totally innocent and was, Hey, it's Matthew. If you don't mind, would love to get your number and talk you through some things. He has also stated that the messaging question had been sent because he wanted to get a dear friend a job as a choreographer on So You Think You Can Dance. However, the message recipient asserts that while she never met him off set, Matthew Morrison's flirty messages made her uncomfortable enough to get the heavies at Fox involved and they saw reason to fire him soon after. Matthew did his career no favors and may have ruined it by contacting a contestant on the show he was judging and sending a message that could be interpreted in unflattering ways. Ezra Miller Ezra Miller here has bizarre behavior to blame for his career failure and refuses to be gendered, so do not get surprised when we refer to Ezra as they throughout this entry. September 30, 1992 is the date that's on Ezra Miller's birth certificate. Their movie career began in 2008, and by 2016, they had advanced so far enough to snag a role in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. They have been in a total of three Fantastic Beasts movies so far, and that's the kind of achievement you empty whiskey barrels in celebration of. In 2016, they wrangled their way into the DC Comics universe, netting cameo appearances in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice and Suicide Squad before getting a lead role in Justice League. Miller headlines The Flash, a superhero movie that's set to make its way to cinemas next year, but owing to their increasingly bizarre and outrageous behavior, projects are drying up and there's muffled talk of their being shut out of Hollywood. Ezra Miller first got in trouble with the law in 2011 when they were pulled over and some weed was found in their car. But nothing came out of that since the judge assigned to the case opted to just fine Miller all of $600. In April 2020, video footage came to light of Miller strangling a woman at a bar, and earlier this year they were twice arrested in Hawaii for verbally abusing and physically assaulting the patrons of a karaoke bar and repeatedly throwing a chair at a woman that barely missed her eye. And oh, in January of this year, Miller went on Instagram to threaten members of the North Carolina KKK chapter. Ezra Miller has also been called out for their relationship with a Native American girl and activist, with this relationship beginning when she was just 12 and Miller was 23. Miller believes that there's nothing wrong with this relationship, views the young lady in question as an apocalyptic Native American goddess, and believes that with her presence and help, they can bring about the apocalypse. In June this year, a mother took out a protective order against Miller, accusing them of harassment. Miller had inappropriately touched her child and believes she's a powerful mystic being who better be appreciative of Miller's guidance and help. Additionally, Ezra Miller is accused of housing a woman and her little kids on their Vermont farm that's filled with guns and drugs. In August 2022, they were charged with burglary for stealing wine from a house. Plus, they believed themselves to be the devil, Jesus, and the next messiah all rolled into one compact and vengeful package. Miller has recently sought treatment for their mental health issues and Warner Brothers has put a freeze on all the upcoming projects their star is involved with. The jury is still out as to whether they have exhausted every ounce of goodwill the public has to give and ruined their career to the hilt. Will Smith 
<laughs> oh, wow. Ah, the slap that brought down a heavyweight's career. Born in Philadelphia in 1968, Will Smith developed an interest in rap before he was a teen. In high school, he and his friend released Girls Ain't Nothing But Trouble. It became something of a hit and was followed by the Rock the House album. By 1989, this small group had done well enough to get a Grammy for Parents Just Don't Understand, with Summertime netting them another Grammy in 1991. 1990 was a bad year for Will Smith, with the IRS after him ferociously garnishing his income after having seized assets to pay off the over $2 million in back taxes they insisted he owed. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air proved to be his saving grace, as the iconic TV show very firmly established his credentials, brought about a positive cash flow, and added a bit of rocket fuel to his career trajectory. His major film roles in the 90s included Bad Boys (1995), Independence Day (1996), and Men in Black (1997). In 1998, he got his first Billboard Hot 100 number one with Gettin' Jiggy With It, and he has over the years released five studio albums. Ali 2001 once again demonstrated Will Smith's prodigious artistic talents, with his performance demanding and getting Golden Globe and Academy Award nominations. Bad Boys 2 2003, The Pursuit of Happiness 2006, I Am Legend 2007, Men in Black 3 2012, Suicide Squad 2016, and King Richard 2021 are some of his more noteworthy movies in this century, with the latter getting him an Academy Award for Best Actor. Now, Will Smith is on this list because he momentarily suffered a grave lapse of judgment. This happened at the 94th Academy Awards when he took exception to what Chris Rock had said about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. He therefore walked on stage and slapped Chris Rock in what many at first took to be a prearranged event or publicity stunt. Smith less than an hour later collected his Oscar for King Richard and offered an apology that was not extended to the fella he had just assaulted. Will Smith's behavior unsurprisingly triggered a massive public backlash. While Chris Rock declined to press assault and battery charges, Smith resigned from the Academy and was later banned from the Oscars for a decade. As a result of the Oscar slap, multiple movies that Smith was involved in have been temporarily suspended, and open season has been declared on him by comedians and meme creators across the planet. He has repeatedly apologized to Chris Rock, but the two have yet to have a sit-down. The Game The Game has like 18 albums under his belt, and he's mostly known for revitalizing the West Coast hip-hop scene. That said, he is a complete artist, and that means he's been in enough movies to qualify to be featured on this list. The Game was born in Compton in 1979, and both his parents were Crips. He, on the other hand, along with his brother, were blood members, and the family situation was anything but loving. After high school, the game made a dangerous living selling drugs and doing gang stuff. He got shot in 2001, wisely decided on a change of career, and began going through classic hip-hop albums to learn what made them such masterpieces. Once recovered, he released a mixtape that Dr. Dre later stumbled across. Dre got in touch and signed the game to Aftermath Entertainment in 2003. That fella spent much of 2003 to 2005 making music video appearances, modeling, and being featured in mixtapes, with Untold Story coming out in October 2004 and the documentary the next year. The latter album got two Grammy nominations, thereby proving that the game assuredly was not a fluke or all hype. 2005 was also marked by a very public and intense feud with G-Unit, and due to this, the game dumped Aftermath and inked a deal with Geffen Records, with his next album again hitting the top of the Billboard 200. His latest album release is Drillmatic, Heart vs. Mind, and compared to most of his other albums, it was a big flop. As for the big screen aspect of his entertainment career, this guy got main roles in Waist Deep 2006, 
Tournament of Dreams 2007, and House Arrest 2012, plus more than a few appearances in TV shows and documentaries. Now, the game has been in trouble with the law more than most. He has been sued for assault, charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest, and in 2008 pled guilty to a felony weapons charge, later getting 60 days in the slammer. He also lost a sexual assault suit that he didn't even try to fight, and refused to pay the $7.1 million judgment that was awarded, with this resulting in the complainant being granted ownership of his independent record label, plus royalties from the Born to Rap album. That plus his endless bad boy behavior has closed doors to him, and with his latest works not being as enchanting as the older ones were, we're afraid he's in a bit of a decline. Fred Savage Inappropriate behavior is to blame for this guy's misfortunes. Fred is a Chicagoan who was born in 1976. At the age of nine, he was in the Morning Star, Evening Star TV show. 1988 saw him being cast at the age of 12 in the role he would be best known for in Wonder Years, a coming-of-age drama that ran from 1988 to 1993, which got him two Golden Globe nominations, plus the same number of Emmy nominations, thereby setting a record for the youngest actor ever to get such heavyweight nominations. In 1999, Fred Savage bulked up his resume and fulfilled a dream of his by beginning movie directing work. He has since directed and produced over a dozen TV shows, and in 2007, he put his directing talents to work in Daddy Day Camp, being eventually rewarded with a Worst Director nomination at the Golden Raspberry Awards. In May 2022, due to inappropriate conduct allegations, Fred Savage was booted out of the Wonder Years reboot that he had been toiling on as an executive producer and director. A group of women working on the show complained to Disney about him, saying they had witnessed and been subjected to verbal harassment and assault, and he was then let go. According to them, Fred Savage has two sides that he presents to the public and can be a complete gentleman with those of his class or above his station and a total nightmare to those he sees as beneath him. Savage denies all accusations and insists he was a complete gentleman on set and off. However, it bears noting that this is not the first time that Fred Savage has been accused of very inappropriate behavior. In 1993, when he was just 16, a costume designer on the Wonder Years accused him and another guy of sexual harassment, with the case eventually being settled out of court, though Savage denied he had done anything wrong. Allegedly, that sexual assault suit and the unfavorable publicity it generated resulted in the Wonder Years being shut down after six seasons. The same kind of thing happened in March 2018, with a costume designer on the Grinder filing suit accusing Savage of assault, battery, and gender discrimination, and saying he had been aggressive and fond of using profanity when talking with female employees of the show. The lawsuit detailed an occasion in which Savage had thrice violently struck the arm of a complainant after she had been asked to clean dandruff off of Savage's suit. Fox later investigated the issue and gave Savage a clean bill of health in mid-2019, but no such favor was granted him this year. Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding Jr. was born in the Bronx in 1968, with both parents being professional singers. The father left when the music group he was with got popular, with Cuba Gooding Jr. and his three siblings being raised by their mom. His first job in the world of show business was as a dancer at the closing ceremony of the 1984 Olympics. 1986 saw him being given his first acting jobs in The Dating Game and Better Days, and in 1988, he got a small role in the comedic extravaganza that was Coming to America. His breakout role was in Boys in the Hood, 1991 a drama movie in which he played the lead role and did his bit alongside Ice Cube, Nia Long, Angela Bassett, and Morris Chestnut. This movie did extremely well at the box office and was universally praised by critics and launched the acting careers of a few of his co-stars. A Few Good Men, 1992, Gladiator, 1992, Outbreak, 1995, and Jerry Maguire, 1996 followed and Gooding's performance in the latter movie got him an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. 
Apart from Jerry Maguire, particularly standout movies of his include Men of Honor, 2000, Snow Dogs, 2002, The Fighting Temptations, 2003, Gifted Hands, The Ben Carson Story, 2009, The Butler, 2013, and Selma, 2014. In 2018, Bayou Caviar, a movie he directed and was a lead in, was released. Now, Cuba Gooding Jr. is in quite a bit of trouble, and it all began on June 13, 2019. On that day, he was arrested for third-degree sexual abuse and forcefully touching after allegedly groping a lady at the Magic Hour rooftop bar and lounge near Times Square. In October 2019, he was indicted on another sexual abuse charge, with his legal troubles encouraging many of his victims to come forward and tell their stories, to the point that by August 2020, up to 30 women had accused the former Oscar winner of such things. In April 2022, Cuba Gooding Jr. pled guilty to forcible sexual contact. Under the terms of his plea bargain, he will not have to spend time in the slammer and will instead put himself through extensive alcohol and behavior modification counseling. But plea bargain or not, Cuba Gooding Jr. is being sued by a few of these women and he is a bit of a leper in Hollywood at the moment. Click on this video to see seven actors you forgot went to jail in 2022 and the reasons why. See you there.